I've had a few requests to tune out a few videos of late for the exam on Wednesday. Look, I've done my best, but I just haven't been able to get them all done. So if I've let you down, I apologise. So I'm just going to do a really simple video on REM versus non-REM. This is my last Unit 3 pre-exam video for 2012. So good luck to everyone on Wednesday. So the sleep cycle. Here we have the typical sleep cycle for an adolescent. And note there's about four or five sleep cycles, each with non-REM and then some REM. And importantly, it's only in those first couple of cycles that we have that deep, slow wave non-REM sleep, stage three and four. You don't need to know these graphs in excessive detail. A couple of key points during childhood. We have significant stage three and four of non-REM due to that highly active lifestyle that we lead during that phase of life. Then when we get to adolescence, young adulthood, still having that stage three and four of non-REM with some significant REM in there. And then by the time we're elderly, we have very little, if any, slow wave sleep. Most of the sleep is actually spent in stage one and two of non-REM with some REM in between. Again, you don't need to know too much detail here, just that a newborn, roughly 50% of their sleep is REM due to that time of rapid brain development, proliferation of those synaptic connections. Once we get to about the adolescent stage, it's a 20% to 80% ratio REM to non-REM. Some key points about REM. Called paradoxical, because we have this highly active mind, as indicated by EEG readings. And we've got this inactive body, REM paralysis from the neck down. Most of our dreaming occurs during REM. You can actually dream during stage 2, 3 or 4 of non-REM. And the content of our REM dreams is less restricted than in a normal waking consciousness when we can restrict and inhibit our thoughts. Key point, takes us about an hour and a half to get to our first hit of REM. And each time we get there, it increases in time. So if you were to be, say, woken up three hours into your sleep and you didn't go back to sleep, you would miss the vast majority of your REM and you'd be REM deprived and therefore the symptoms that go along with that in terms of irritability, difficulty concentrating, different with memory consolidation, etc. When describing EEG readings, you need to do this in terms of frequency and amplitude. So in terms of EEG readings during REM, the brain waves are irregular, low amplitude, high frequency, sawtooth, beta-like brain waves very similar to those of a ordinary wakefulness, if you look at the similarity. So when referring to any of the stages of non-REM, you actually need to specify NREM. Don't just say stage one, say NREM stage one. So stage one and two of NREM are considered light sleep, combination of alpha and theta brain waves. And the difference between the two is stage one is more alpha than theta, whereas stage two is more theta than alpha. Two common characteristics of stage two of non-REM, sleep spindles and K-complexes. All you need to say here is that, so that you're distinguishing one from the other, is that sleep spindles are high frequency, whereas K-complexes are high amplitude. Stage three and four of non-REM sleep, commonly known as slow wave sleep, because of the minimal level of brain activity as indicated on the EEG where we have very low frequency, high amplitude brain waves. And according to the restorative theory of sleep, it's during this phase of our sleep that we get some of that significant physiological restoration, whereas REM sleep is important for our psychological and cognitive restoration. Importantly, the difference between stage three and stage four is that stage three is more theta than delta brain waves, whereas stage four is more delta than theta. Key characteristic of this phase of sleep is if we are woken, we will experience sleep inertia, where it will take us several minutes, up to 10, to orient ourselves due to the lack of brain activity. 
Thank you.